Hi, my name is David. Today we're going to do a build a tribute page project under the, the responsive web design certification. And in this project, it wants us to build an app similar to this one. You can see here, it has the name, an image, a timeline, some information, and a link as well. So this is gonna be a fun one because we get to really practice our coding skills and get the foundations down. And this project isn't gonna be the most impressive app. It's not gonna have the coolest design. It's gonna be a simple app that doesn't use any fancy libraries, templates, or anything like that. It was just gonna use HTML and CSS to do it. And it's not the most efficient way to code, but this is one way so you can really understand the foundations of this app. So, before we go straight coding, we need a game plan for how we're gonna do this. And for this one, we're gonna make a tribute to Steve Jobs. And you can pick whoever you want, pick whoever you think is a real model to yourself. So we're gonna write a game plan of what we're gonna do. So the first thing we wanna do is that we want to, and I also, I forgot to note that they want us, they have a code pen template for us, where you can code it here. But I highly recommend you getting up, setting up VS Code and also GitHub to host this project so you can show it off to others. So that's the prerequisite. And now let's figure out the game plan. So the first thing we wanna do is that we wanna look th understand and look at the user stories. And these user stories are key because we're, we're gonna see them a lot in tech because they really emphasize what the users want to experience. And after that, we want to create a wireframe. So we wanna create a layout of how we're gonna do this web page. And we already have an inspiration on what we want, but if we didn't, that would be another step we would have to do before creating a wireframe. And then after that, we want to code it out in HTML. And after that, we do the CSS nest styling. And we, then we run the test to make sure it, and we're gonna run tests throughout of it. So it's not necessarily last, but throughout HTML, step three and four. So let's look at the user stories. So the first one is that is to have an idea main. And I'm just gonna, create notes for this for shorthand, id equals main. And next we want to have, uh, and this main should have all the other elements inside of it. And next we should have element with a title id, and that describes the subject of the tribute, okay. And then number three, I should see a div element with a corresponding id equals image div. So we wanna know that we're gonna have an image that the image is gonna be contained inside a div with this. Didn't copy. Five. Oh, okay, I see the problem. For we just see an image element was inside of this div. Five, I just see an element with a corresponding ID equals image caption. So we want a caption for this div, for this image and that should be underneath this, cap, this div. Number six, we should see an element with a corresponding ID equals tribute infill. So some information about this person. Number seven, I should see an A element with a corresponding ID equals tribute link. So we want a link inside of this and we also want target blank. So it opens in a new link. Eight, we want an IMG element to be responsively resize image. And then the nine image Centered, okay. And usually image stories are more 
user focus and this is more of a coding focus, but this helps you because it's just a basic app. And now we got the stories down. Let's create a wireframe. And I recommend you use this website called Lucid App. It's free. And this is an important step that you shouldn't neglect in coding your apps because you really get to plan it out. And we can see, and let's create two different versions of it, one for mobile and one for desktop. So we look at here, it starts with the title and a little subheading. So we create this title with a little subheading. And then below that, we see an image and a caption. So copy, paste. You want an image with a caption. And then after that, we have some content and it has the A link as well. Okay, and we can make this differently for a desktop as well to make it responsive. Is that it doesn't do it in this one, but we can stack it so when it gets wider, because this picture is kind of too wide, we can have the image, some of the content go on this side of it. So, what will be different is that. Desktop. Copy that, it has the same title and the same image caption, but this would be in the same row. Copy, paste. So that would be the difference between it. So that would be our outline for this. And now we know what we're gonna work with. Okay. And now let's code it out in the HTML. So we set up Visual Studio Code. We create a, a index.html and a style.css for styling. And I'm gonna make this full screen and I'm gonna put this in another screen so we can see it easier. Great. So to get started, with our index, we want to do shift, exclamation mark, and we see this identifies and we can press tab and we have a starter template. And we want to name it Steve Jobs. Okay, and now we can also right click here, open with live server. And we can see here, this is the app and we see the title here, Steve Jobs. And now we want to add the styling. Connect, we have to connect the style to the index. And how we're gonna do that is that, let's say you don't have this memorized. And I wanna show this in you a tutorial on this app by doing it in a way that you don't have everything memorized. So you wanna look up how to link CSS style to HTML. And you're gonna be constantly having to Google these things. And we can see here, okay, this is how we do it. We do this link, wheel, and such. So we can just copy that. And then the href, we have to make it the same. So style.css. Great. And now this, this project has tests. And when you code, you're going to be pretty much writing your own test, but they give you started test with you. And Tests are imp pretty important when you code in large teams. So how do we put tests inside of this? Is that we go in the body and we add a script. And we do source equals copy that, close the script. Now we can see that this has this 
hamburger icon, which are a test. Let me go here and we can run test and we can see the test that we have. So it's already passing one using HTML JavaScript. Well, that's not very a test. <laughs> but, and we can see here, and there's, they have this as well. Okay. So now, let's create the ID main. So inside the body, we create main element, and we can give an ID of main. Close it. And that element should have everything we want. Now we want a title div. So we want div ID equals title. And inside of this, we can put the header. Now let's test it out. And great, now we see it. And let's test out the test. Great, so we got the ID main and then the title that we want with the description of it. So this is gonna be very plain now because we're just doing the HTML first. And after that, we can add, add more to it. And now we can add a little caption to this, subheading to it. Hungry, stay forest. Great, so we have that. But this technically, we're gonna have to change it later on. We're gonna have to put in one H1, but we have it there for reference. Okay, so now we wanna add the image. So you wanna div, ID equals image div. Great. And now we need an uh, image. So let's try to find an image of Steve Jobs. Which one? So many to pick from. Let's just use this one and we can do copy image address. So in this div, we'll have an image. And how, how do you add images? So how do you add images? This is the syntax we need. And then now for the source, we can use copy image. And now we give a description. given presentation. And we wanna add the ID of image to this. Let's test it out. Great, we have it there. Let's check our test. Great, we have the image div. And what's wrong with this here? within the image div, okay. I see an image element, which we have here with the corresponding ID of image. 
Okay, I put IMG instead of image. And now let's test it again. Great, it passed. And now let's look at the next one. The image div should have this caption. So inside of this div, we want to put another div. ID equals image caption. And let's give it some text. Steve Jobs giving a presentation. Let's take a look. Nice, we have it here. Let me put it to the first one. And let's run the test. Nice, it passes that test. Now we have the tribute info. So, and then this div, we want another div where we're gonna put the content. Image. Okay. And now what content should we put? Now let's put timeline, uh, H2. Timeline. All right. And now let's see, I Googled it earlier, some key dates that we want. Nineteen fifty-five. He was born. So how, we want to let's look at this again. We want a, a unordered list. So let's look at unordered list HTML. We see we need this context. This syntax, I mean. Okay. On order list. We can see that it'll show here, but we don't want that. So we want the point part, 1955. Let's just do another one, 1977, Apple Incorporates. Nineteen ninety seven becomes CEO. And let's just do one more.
All right. Okay, let's see how that looks. Great. So let's run some tests to see if that passes. And now we need a tribute link. So we can say at the end of this, for more information, go to, and let's see add, how to add link. Okay, this is what we need. So let's copy that. A. And then href. And then here's the text. Here's the text we want. And let me add a period after that. And I also want to. Target blank as well. Now let's check it. So we see here, it goes to a new link. Great, now let's test it. I have to add the ID to it as well. Okay, it passes that link. Now we have to make the image responsibly resize. So let's look at this more. The image element should responsibly resize relative to the width of its appearance, which is exceeding its original size. So how, how are we gonna figure this out is that we can simply Google it. <laughs> Great, let's look at here. Oh, so this one's looking with, they're using this margin left auto, margin right auto, display block with 100% height auto. I think this will make it responsive and this will make it fit the other centered, which is the other criteria centered. So we can just copy this and you look at our CSS. Great, now we pass this all test. Now let me find a different picture because this one's kind of blurry.
Great. Now that we are passing all the tests, let's style this more. And to style it, we can use the Google Chrome tools of inspect, right click inspect, and Google Chrome developer tools. And we can see what we need to adjust. So the first thing we want to do is that we want to change the, the title to be centered. So we can click here to select the element and see what we're looking at, the H1. So H1, we can center it by, let's look at how we're going to do it first in here, plus sign, and let's do a text align. And we can see that the, val the values for it and let's do center. And now we have it centered. So we can just copy that into the code and we have it there. And let's do the subheading, but it's technically not H2. It's not a good code to write it actually H2. It's part of H1, but like a subheading for it. So what we can do here is that we can combine it under the H1. So we can use spans. So here we want to enter. Span ID equals major close the span Steve Jobs here. And then we have a break. And then we copy this. And we have an ID of minor. Stay hungry, stay forced. And now we see here it's centered. And then now let's make this smaller. We can see, click on what we're looking at, span minor, add styling. And we can do font size. So let's look at what is, what's the font size now? 32, 32. Okay, so let's make it like 20. Okay, yeah, that looks fine. So we can just copy that. And we can add the quotations and then the period. Great, so now we got the title how we want it. So now that we have the heading styled, let's move on to the rest of the body. And we can see here that this could be styled up. And we wanted to show like in the diagram we created before that when it's mobile, the image and the content stacks up on top of each other. But on a desktop, we can use an image and a content side by side because the desktop computer has a wider screen. So we can do this by using CSS Grid or a Flexbox. But what we're gonna do today is that we're gonna use a Grid because I'm more comfortable with it. So how it will work is that we need to create both of these content, the image div and then this content div inside of a container. So we look here and we do, so after the title div and before the image div, we put div class equals container. And now we close this div below the div and above the main here, save it. And now everything's inside a container. So now we need to add a display container into it. Display container, display grid. Now we're using CSS grid for this. And now we have to put it, we'll put it default as two columns. And what well, we can do it dynamically. And this is this article I looked up and we can use this syntax to make it more dynamic and we wouldn't need media queries. So we're creating grid columns that will auto fit with a minimum and maximum. And since this picture is kind of bigger than this, we can go with 500 pixels and then it'll fit to one, for, um, one half of it otherwise, or not, or collapse to the other one. So we can see here now as in two columns, that's how we wanted. 
and then it collapses as how we want it for this. Great. And now let's add a gap between us. So when it gets too close, it's not touching like that. And now gap 10 pixels. And let's see it. Great, now there's a little gap here. When we look at it. So now let's do some finishing touches on this style. And we can see here the Steve Jobs given presentation. We could center this. So let's look at here. It's on the is the pay tag under the div ID of image caption. So then when we it goes collapses, this will be centered as well. So how we can do this is that we can text align it. So we see that it's part of the image caption. And then P, and now we do text align center. And there we go. And that would be it. So let's just make sure that everything passed the test still. Great, Every, all the tests pass. So when you're styling it, I kind of use a combination of the Google Chrome developer tools with this. And sometimes if I know it, sometimes you, there's a lot of guessing with the styling. So I just use the Google Chrome developer tools. And that'll be it for this one. This is a simple website who is responsive, as we can see here and has image responsive, has, has text, a content, a very simple web page, nothing fancy, but this really combines all the things that we learned so far to create a responsive web design. Thank you so much.